Uh, hello everyone, welcome to chapter 129 of the last thoughts of a busy mind. This one titled, Say, don't you remember, they called me Al. No, they called me Ali, but you know, I wanted to be a full reference to the song, uh, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? You know, once I built a railroad, I made it run. Made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm still getting used to the new mic and the wires that tangle everywhere. Uh, so yeah, uh, first of all, I'm still sick, so there is a chance of coughing. As usual, I will not cough into the microphone as much as I can. Again, I could edit this out, but the charm of last thoughts is that it is an unedited last thoughts of a busy mind. And my drink today is cranberry syrup and water. And let me take a sip. Great, amazing. It's cold, refreshing. The ratio is actually good. It doesn't uh, taste uh, too sweet or too tart. But at the same time, it's not too watery in the sense that, oh, it's a glass of water where a whisper of cranberry once passed it. It's actually pretty good. Um, so, why this name? Why don't you remember they call me Al? Um, a couple of reasons. First of all, as I said, I was sick, and that meant I didn't move at all throughout the week. Yesterday was the first time I had an extensive movement, and my calves are hurting because of it, because the whole week I was bedridden. I couldn't move. Um, I, okay, let me just give you a couple of things. I didn't tell these uh, last week because I didn't want to really talk about them. I fell last Thursday and so my knee is completely shot and uh, I had a cold which meant a lot of coughing and to the point that yesterday uh, I coughed blood now it's not anything serious don't you get worried um, apparently the force of the cough is so bad that uh, like I don't know what you call muirag like tiny veins I, don't know. I should have looked it up Tiny veins in my throat are getting scratched, and that's where the blood is coming from. It's not an innate problem. Um, I haven't coughed blood since uh, yesterday morning, so that's actually a good sign that it is not a problem within my lungs. I'm not dying yet, hopefully. And uh, so, because of that... Uh, I can't really talk about what happened throughout the week because nothing of too significant did happen. Um, that was most of it. I played a couple of rounds of Dracula vs. Van Helsing on Board Game Arena. Incredibly enjoyable. Games are really good. I love board games. And that's actually getting me to the next point. Um, oh, by the way, last week there was two birthdays. And they were incredibly good. I, I'm really happy. I, I managed to see a smile that really, really brightened my week. Like one of the reasons I'm not crying my eyes out right now is the memory of that smile. Because I am in that mood. I think I've talked about it before. I might have. I probably have. Um, because... It's something that comes and goes. Like every once in a while, these feelings do tend to come back and stay with me for at least a couple of days. So I might have talked about them before. I probably have talked about them when I talked about loneliness and stuff like that. But... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. As you see, the coughs are incredibly violent. I was just getting better, you know? That just sucks that I'm coughing like that right now. So, what I was saying, I forgot. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was talking about the feeling that comes around once every 
in a while. I have my notes in front of me, I swear. Uh, and that is and the, the sense of losing touch with uh, people. Now, I am not a sociable guy. I am actually an introvert with pretty incredible social anxiety. So the few friends I have who I talk to all the time, who I um, go out with, who I tell them when I don't feel very well, they are incredibly important to me. But every once in a while, well, that's just the nature of life, I guess, you tend to lose touch with them and then you go back and regain touch. And because I'm such a well social anxious guy, uh, I tend to make these tiny things big in my head. And so every tiny thing I do, I feel like, oh, it's a massive thing, but it probably isn't. Like, yeah, I don't, haven't talked to this guy for two weeks. It's like, yeah, we're still friends. We're still incredibly important in our lives. I just remember we used to talk every day and I feel sad that we don't do that now. And that really does bother me sometimes. It um, That what happened like a couple of days ago. And it made me think like, oh, I need to get back to some of my friendships and try to rebuild them again. The problem is that maybe it, it's not a single-sided one-sided decision it needs to be on both sides and when i feel like oh it's not happening from either side i feel extremely worse it gets to the point where everything becomes big and massive and everything like i feel incredibly useless like oh my, my friends don't really need me kind of useless and you know, maybe they don't. Uh, nobody says they should need me in order for me to be in their lives. But, you know, it does hurt still. It does hurt uh, when I feel like, oh, yeah, they really don't need me. Uh, my existence in their life doesn't enrich or worsen theirs. It just is there. And that that hurts. Like on a fundamental level, it really fucking hurts. That's everything inside me. And I hate it. I hate it. Uh, because when, when things like that happen... Okay, let me tell you a little bit of a story. Let, let me take a sip first. Okay, the sip became the whole glass. Let me tell you a story, or at least a personal philosophy, personal thought. Um, I am about to be 27, like I'm 26 and a half, sort of, more than a half. And uh, life hasn't been, well, you know, say don't you remember they called me Al, uh, it was Al all the time. Say, don't you remember? I'm your pal. Buddy, can you spare a dime? It's kind of like that. You know, you have ideas of what will happen with your life, and none of them have happened. Um, there is an ever-going realization that maybe none of them will ever happen. Now, that is a disturbing thought, and um, not incredibly reassuring to a person, but at the same time, I feel like, okay, if I haven't managed to make my movies the way I wanted to, if I haven't managed to get a career the way I wanted to, at the very least, I have gotten um, relationships that I uh, I feel like have helped the world in some way or have left an impression on people. Uh, my friendships, my... Um, well, my romantic relationship... I feel like, oh, these are the stuff that people probably, if I die, will remember me. I have a problem with death and remembrance. Like, remember Coco? Uh, there is a reason I cried at the end of Coco. When they, uh, when the grandmother, oh my god, the motorcycles outside are going crazy. When the grandmother starts singing, remember me. I should have named this remember me too, but no, it's this is more important. Um... 
because body can use paradigm brother can use paradigm is a it's a great song and i have been listening to it non-stop for the last couple of days say don't you remember they call me al it was al all the time so there is that like we are showing thought it's basically me trying to find a way of dealing with the fact that a lot of the stuff in my life aren't the way i wanted them to be and it's some of it is my fault for um dilly dallying and not learning the skills that i needed to some of it is just because the world fucking sucks and so with all of them I just sometimes feel uh feel like this is the only thing I have and it's not right I know it's not right and it's not healthy I know that too but it's a feeling and um I don't look for logic in it I mean there is logic behind it as I said I haven't gotten much in my other areas and I should, you know, by the way, I should. Like yesterday, I made, a, a, we were making stuff out of air dry clay. It was my like second time working with air dry clay. The first time was a miserable mess, but this time I had actually fun because we had tools and I had someone who guided me through some of the steps. Um, and she was incredibly patient too, and like helped me oh you know you need to use more water which i didn't even use last time i worked with air dry clay so that should tell you my level of expertise there and we had tools we had silicon tip tools which helped shaping and all of them and i made a tiny ghost the first thing i made and i made a tiny dick i'm not even joking i made a dick out of air dry clay um it was fun and at that moment i felt you know happy i felt like oh my god the person i'm with really wants me there and all of that but then today happened and today i feel like oh she's just tolerating me because i know i give people too much credit in that way that oh they're tolerating me people have low tolerance they don't really want to tolerate other people but yeah at this point sometimes when i feel like oh uh, maybe my friends don't really need me in their lives maybe my friends don't really want me in their lives maybe my friends can go on without me um it's a bit of a both a sobering thought i know a lot of people take that and like go with it oh i'm gonna use it as motivation i just stop and become depressed i can't like one of the things is that a lot of people use uh, disappointment and depression as motivators you know oh we're gonna um, make lack of hope our motivators of creating hope i'm not one of those i i'm an idiot optimist i always look for the silver lining and i try to find that and um, when i do find it that is what gives me motivation of going on like otherwise i just stop i just lay down and don't do anything at all but (coughs) (coughs) sorry yeah when that happens when i feel like oh my friends really don't need me in their lives they they can go on they probably don't even remember me or realize what i am doing or who i am or whatever the fuck it's it's not coherent thought it's it's depressive self-destructive thought and uh, when that happens um i break a little bit inside say don't you remember they called me al it was out all the time. Now, I say this is one of what I'm deciding to talk, to talk about because every once in a while it does happen. Last year it was worse. This year it's milder because I realized that, oh, well, some of these uh, friendships that are really important to me, I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to tell them, you know, this is important to me. Come on, let's fix it. 
but it does help. Like today, one of my friends called me uh, after a while, and the fact that I realized how much I missed him and how much I secretly wanted him to call me, that hurt. Not in a bad way, like, I'm glad he called, but that hurt because... I don't know, I feel like I'm losing them. I don't like being alone. I hate loneliness, I've told that before. And... Uh, sometimes when I end up alone, I hate it. Because of a sickness, I couldn't go out, I couldn't meet the person I... I really wanted to meet, and when I did, I, I, I did, like, okay, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupid. Like, I am in a mental state that someone watching Wallace and Gromit without me really, like, it really hit me in a bad way. Not because of, like, oh, I wanted to watch. I mean, I do want to watch. I will watch it later. I will watch all of the Aardman Studios, uh, stuff uh i need to rewatch first man as well so i will go back and watch all of the stuff they made creature comfort wallace and gromit first man did they make pirates with the hugh grant one with dodo uh i don't remember uh, i don't know what else they made anyways uh like that really because at that point i was like oh um, I'm such a burden, I'm such a... Basically, I'm so bad at watching movies with people that people rather just watch them without me. Which is understandable. I'm not an easy guy to watch movies with. I'm, I'm gonna admit to that. I talk to the movie, I uh, laugh out loud sometimes. I just talk throughout the movie. I don't really sometimes listen. Uh, so... I'm not an easy person to watch a movie with, but you know, I still want at least some people. I want to watch stuff with them, and oh my god, I am, I am really feeling a lump in my throat. Jesus. Basically, gist of the matter in this episode is that I was sick all week. I stayed in bed all week. I felt alone, and I'm emotionally unstable. I went to a doctor yesterday, by the way. I've got a bunch of meds. Hopefully by next week, my coughs will be less and less violent. But yeah. When this happens, it's hard to be an idiot optimist. Like, this this is the fuel for my idiot optimism. Where I look and say, oh, future might look bright. B because when, when I feel alone, when I feel unwanted, when I feel like, oh, the people who I hold closest in my life... And the person who I want to spend a lot of time with probably doesn't even need me because when I'm with her, I can't really help alleviate her problems or just make her feel better. Uh, future looks bleak there. And future in Iran is bleak as it is. I don't need help with it. They recently did another fucking blunder and... <coughs> are probably going to fuck up even more people. Life in Iran isn't fun. Hmm. Anyways, with that incredibly joyous end, uh, don't forget to send me a message on Spotify for podcasters. Uh, I will play your message at the beginning of the next episode because it's a voice message if you want to send me that. And you might shape a whole episode around your message. Um... If you are on YouTube, you can comment there. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're commenting. And if you're on any other listening platform, I do have CastBox on my phone and I have the notifications for it on. So you can send me a comment there. Any other way of reaching me is email or just go to YouTube and uh, you can reach me there. So yeah. Hopefully, I will see you next week feeling a little bit better. But yeah, in the meantime, once I built a tower up to the sun, brick and river turn lime, 
Once I built a tower.